Good morning, my name is Margaret, and we are going to get started with an introduction to pop and folk culture for my TDT 1 task 3. So, the performance objective before we begin this PowerPoint uh, is that given pictures of world cultural objects or items, individuals, uh, meaning the students or the parents at the end of this PowerPoint, will be able to identify which elements belong to pop culture and which most likely belong to folk culture. So we'll go over a definition of each of those as we continue. Before we begin talking about pop and folk culture individually, we need to look at cultural traits as a whole. Um, so a cultural trait as a definition is a repetitive or meaningful uh, trait or characteristic or action uh, of a group of people. So some are outwardly visible. Most uh, of these traits are going to be internal uh, or not outwardly visible. So we use the metaphor of an iceberg. If you look on the right hand side, this image uh, portrays kind of that idea. Everything on the very top, the food, music, language, uh, dress styles, performing arts, holidays and customs. All of those cultural traits are things that are outwardly visible. Someone who is not a part of that culture will easily be able to recognize. Uh, however, uh, etiquette and rules and uh, attitudes toward age, gender roles, all of those other things uh, are below the surface, meaning they're part of the culture, but they're not easily recognizable by an outsider. So we typically categorize uh, these cultural traits into a few different categories, behavior, clothing, music, religion, and then language as well. All right, moving on to folk culture individually. Uh, folk culture is static, which means it does not change, or it changes very, very slowly. So it's practiced in isolated places by isolated people, and by relatively homogeneous, which means the same groups of people. So they have the same uh, ideas on gender, they have the same religion, they have the same language, um, and it rarely changes with time. So folk culture we typically see um, like in the Arctic or places that are very, very isolated by desert in uh, Saharan Africa. Um, that's where we're going to see a lot of folk culture. Typically, there's not a lot of interaction with outside areas. So here's an example of a toothbrush used in folk culture in Northern Africa and Southwest Asia. Um, so this is, you know, a toothbrush that you chew on one end and it cleans your, your teeth off of all the gunk and it sharpens them. And this is what the folk cultures uh, in those area believe is best for your teeth and your gum health. Uh, here's another example of cultural dress in Madagascar. Um, so southeastern Africa or island off the coast of Southeast Africa. Uh, and this is kind of the best formal wear that this group, uh, this folk culture uses. So on the contrary, popular culture is really the opposite. It's dynamic, which means it changes often, typically found in more connected places by more connected people. And the people that practice it are very, very heterogeneous. So very diverse, meaning lots and lots of different um, cultural traits mixed in, lots of different religions and languages and ideas on race and gender. Um, pop culture is something that changes often and quickly particularly because of the use of the internet. So things like memes, things like the water flipping challenge or water bottle flipping challenge, those are all part of pop culture um, and they change quickly. Um, so here's an example that directly contrasts our other uh, example of folk culture, that modern toothbrush, even some of those have Disney uh, little icons, little characters on them. And then fashion, we know that fashion in the Western world changes often. Uh, really from year to year or from season to season. So very different than uh, the other image that we saw before of that formal wear. All right, quick quiz to meet our objective. Which of these is pop culture and which is folk culture? So if you answered McDonald's as pop culture, you're absolutely right. It's uh, worldwide and it doesn't represent one specific group of people. Loompy, on the other hand, represents the Filipino uh, culture and a kind of Filipino traditions and holidays. So that would be a uh, folk culture dish. Okay, another quick quiz. The house on the left is going to be your pop culture. That's widely, widely seen across the world. And the house on the right is only gonna be found in folk cultures where mud is prevalent because it's a mud house. Hey, thank you for sticking around today. And I hope you learned a little bit about pop and folk culture.